there are games that are good enough to make you fall in love with a certain character or franchise, or even turn you into a lifelong fan of a certain console, but then there are the games that make you fall in love with gaming itself. Today, I want to talk about a game that made me truly fall in love with virtual reality and its potential, and in my opinion, is the best VR game that has ever been created uh, yet, of course. We're talking about Boneworks. Ironically, a very divisive VR game, so intense that some people physically can't play it because it'll make them ill. But there's something really magical about Boneworks, and I want to break it down step by step because even though it's got issues, there are lessons to be learned here about how VR VR games should be made, but more importantly, how people should be able to play a VR game. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time now, so here's a full dive on what makes Boneworks work. To start this one off, I want to talk about a very real problem with most VR games, and it's likely the reason why most high-cost VR games end up flopping. There's an ironic paradox of VR game development that isn't always the case, but I'm sure it's something that you've noticed. VR games that should be good, that have a solid IP, a solid development team, and good funding behind them, end up being terrible. Two of the most recent examples being Medal of Honor Above and Beyond and Sniper Elite VR, but the list doesn't stop there. And let's just be real, as many hours as I have put in something like Skyrim VR, I have to mod the game for it to even be playable. Doom, another great franchise, this should work in VR, but it just doesn't. And I have a theory here. These expensive VR games with reputable studios behind them end up making bad VR games not because they're incapable of making making a good game, but because of two main reasons. One, they don't really know VR. Most of these game studios aren't VR studios by trade, so the things that we VR users expect to be shipped in a game just aren't included. Think about smooth turn, snap turn, multi-controller support, etc. And two, which is the much bigger deal, so many developers just play it safe. Maybe it's because they aren't skilled enough to not play safe, but more than likely it's because they're too scared to break the boundaries. Anything that can possibly make anyone motion sick or disoriented seems to be cut from these games to where the only thing you have left in your high action World War II shooter is a character model that moves half a mile an hour with floating arms and levels with practically no verticality and stale movement in general. The games just end up up being boring. And it's because they have to play it safe. If you are a big studio branching out to make a VR game, even with the best intentions in mind, imagine going to your executives with this pitch. We're going to add a feature into our game that may make 20% of all users hurl. Yeah, that's probably not going to go over too well. But this is where Boneworks literally said, F you. We're gonna make not just a game, but a hardcore physics playground with intense verticality, slow motion movements, and a freaking jump button. Hold up, hold up, tangent real quick. Do you know how many VR games have a freaking jump button? Like, not gonna lie, out of my entire Steam VR game library of 250 games or so, I can count maybe two or three. I'm not saying jump buttons work on every game, and not all games even need them or should have them, but come on. Back to what I was saying. Not only can I jump, but I can grab grab a pole, carry it around with me, and pole vault off of the ground. Why? Because of physics. And no, you don't have to play it that way. There's a walking path in case you're one of those people, but I have options and I like that. If I want to, I can grab a gun, hook it onto a ceiling pipe thing, and shimmy around. And there's actually a much bigger point here that I'll make in a moment, but to bounce off of the last paragraph, Boneworks just doesn't play it safe. It lets you move fast, slow, up, down, hold onto things, climb ladders, use geometry and physics to propel you to weird places, and it makes Boneworks feel special. Special in a way that not many other VR games can make me feel. And look, there are places that Boneworks fails before I actually drop the bomb on why this is the best VR game ever and what game mechanics make it so, I do want to talk about what stops Boneworks from being perfect. Of course, more comfort options for people that do get sick wouldn't hurt other people's gameplay, so uh, we could use some of that. <laughs> but there's a bigger thing regarding Boneworks and its lore, and if we're talking about storyline, uh, Boneworks 
Oryx isn't very good. I mean, the world building is really interesting, and I've played the campaign more times than any other VR game that I own, but that's because of how the game plays, not because of how the game plays out. And just being real, one place that a handful of other VR games have Boneworks easily beat is in the story department. And before the Boneworks community comes at me about the nuance and masterfully minifull storytelling techniques used and how there's an insane lore outside of the game that connects all of Stress Level Zero's other games, uh, yeah, I guess. But was it in the Boneworks campaign levels, level 0 through 13? No. Well, then it kind of didn't happen as far as I'm concerned and as far as most other people are concerned. Video game franchises can do very well with extended lore. Halo has a fantastic written lore outside of the franchise that just deepens the understanding of the main plot. But I can plop someone down to play Halo 3, never seeing Halo before, and they'll still get the gist. Same with Half-Life Alex or Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. They have pretty good stories all on their own. Boneworks, though, it gets a resounding hmm, out of me. Next, on the problems. Uh, talking about game development, playing it safe, and how it's cool that Boneworks didn't do that, but at the same time, the final boss is practically a ladder. And that's not because the actual boss is a ladder. That's because after you beat the game, you have to climb a really tall ladder, and it's kind of hard. And it's moments like this where I'm falling down after my arms are getting tired because I missed a rung and I've done this five times that I momentarily ask myself, how hard is it to just do what Half-Life Alex does? Just let me teleport like almost any other VR game. And you know what? I'm glad that they didn't do that because that's what everybody else does. Can you imagine working in a VR game studio and proposing that the last level of your game be completed with a 200 foot tall ladder that players have to climb rung by rung physically with their body? It's almost comical. But after I was done doing just that, I realized something. Eh, that felt really good. Not the slight nausea or sore arms, but climbing a peak that seemed impossible until I did it. And it's honestly one of the most hilarious but sad satisfying final bosses of any game I've ever played. And this serves as a perfect transition into the basis of this video. Boneworks isn't a perfect game by any means, but it's absolutely my favorite, and in my opinion, the absolute best VR game that we've gotten yet. And it's because of a simple principle that I've been building up to this entire video. Boneworks is more than a game, it's a system. And if you play Boneworks for any longer than a couple of hours, I think you'll get what I'm saying. VR is different from the traditional flat screen gaming that we've had for decades now. Not because the screen is on your face, but because of the massive potential for interactions within the virtual world around you. Some games get this partially right, and some games get this horribly wrong, but Boneworks is special because everything is expected. Within minutes of gameplay, practically without any proper tutorial, the game just makes sense. From red buttons to climbing sections, it's hard to put words exactly, but being in Boneworks feels like being a child dropped into a world with totally new yet recognizable laws of physics and rules of interactions. The rules are simple, but the possibilities are complex. Boneworks works because it's built entirely upon a set of basic rules that you just have to learn yourself. Everything has a weight, including your own body, and usually things that look like they weigh a certain weight act in the game like how you'd expect. Also, hands don't clip through objects, objects don't clip through other objects, and your head certainly doesn't either. Red buttons do things, valves turn. Oh, and also, if there's an object in the game, it's interactable. This is something I dislike about a lot of VR games that have props everywhere. Sure, it looks pretty, but if only a fraction of everything is something that's interactable, my suspension of disbelief that I'm in a virtual world gets really muddy. But back to climbing a ladder. On my first playthrough, I was frustrated that I couldn't scale it quickly, but the next time I was at that ladder, or any ladder, or any climbing surface in the game at all, it was so easy. And it's because, like a child dropped into a different world, I found my way by exploring and experimenting. And I only did that because I was able to buy the developers. The developers let me do things rather than restrict me. And this is the foundational basis of why I think Boneworks does so well. It's not masterfully crafted with perfect interactions, and however beautiful it is, it's also not the guided virtual tour that Half-Life Alex is either. Instead, it's a very well-structured virtual physics standard with a game built into that world. The game is second 
secondary to its laws, and that feels very apparent. Stress level zero, the Boneworks developers gave the players a full body with good enough IK, gave them tools to essentially puppeteer a character in any way that they want, and allowed that character to interact with the environment in not realistic ways, but in believable ways that are predictable. And that led to me over and over thinking, I wonder if this works, or I wonder what happens if I do this, or if I can do this. And that's wonderful. And I'll also say this, I do not speedrun any games. I'm just not a speedrunner. I'm the kind of person that plays a game at my own pace. I usually don't 100% anything. And sadly, I usually don't even finish most games I start. Yet, for some weird reason, I became obsessed with speedrunning Boneworks. Don't know why, I think I was just intrigued by the game and its mechanics. And I was interested that it took me nine hours to complete the first time, yet the same game could be completed in 30 minutes with no glitches, no exploits, just by knowing the game and how the physics work slightly better. And I did just that. I beat the game in under 40 minutes, including that ladder that took me 40 minutes to even climb up the first time. Turns out, if you're smart, you don't even have to use a ladder. And for some reason, that idea just spoke to me. And of course, then there's the mods. The Boneworks modding community have pumped countless extra hours into the game, and uh, you know, this is the same thing for Half-Life Alex or Beat Saber or Blade and Sorcery, but there's something special about playing Master Chief uh, Spider-Man <laughs> in something like Boneworks. And there's also other small things that like 99% of other games miss, like having a good capture mode while playing the game. So you can make content that has good looking gameplay. There's a reason why Boneworks is in the background of like 70% of my videos and devs, you should definitely take a note on that one. So yeah, between the really consistent and predictable physics engine in game, which is probably even more important for a VR game than its traditional counterparts to the design language and oh gosh, the music, to the community that made Boneworks even better afterwards with mods. Stress Level Zero wasn't afraid to make a game that pushed boundaries, and it worked out for them. It's not perfect, but it did legit ruin a lot of VR games for me, and made me see what the future of VR gaming could be. I don't want every game to be a Boneworks clone, but what makes Boneworks good isn't the fact that it's Boneworks, it's that it has a system that works, and that's kind of a different way to approach game development in general. In VR, you're in a new virtual world, so it would make sense to have a consistent set of physics and interaction rules within that world. And my dream game would probably be something like Half-Life Alex storytelling and graphic fidelity built with Boneworks at its base, uh, but with multiplayer. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, and with mod support, of course. Oh, and uh, have a quest mode so more people can experience this. But that's a really tall ask. Yeah, I actually really enjoy making these kinds of videos, you know, breaking down and analyzing why a piece of VR software is good or maybe even bad. And I had a lot of fun with the Zenith one and this one as well. And I think I may do another one of these, including a very in-depth VR chat analysis, so if you liked this, please let me know. But other than that, I think that wraps this one up, and this is why, to me, Boneworks is the best VR game ever made, yet. <laughs> Hit that bell, subscribe, do all those things if you want to. I'll catch you on the next one. Much love, thrill out. Oh, what up, son?